welcome to Opinions to another call-in show. This is where members of our community have submitted questions for our guests mm -hmm. who will help answer and advise in the best way they can using their expert mm -hmm. knowledge. And like mm -hmm. always, mm -hmm. no one has heard these questions in advance, so you'll hear the answers based on their expertise and gut reaction. And today mm -hmm. we are joined by Dan and Casey of Untethered Media. Now, some of you have met me, have met both at our multi-day Connect event in Seville. But Dan, Casey, for those who are unfamiliar well, with Untethered Media, do you want to just give a the users and the, the listeners and the watchers just a little bit about what yourself and what you guys do? Yeah, absolutely. So we're Dan Casey, uh, founders of Untethered Media, a full-service tourism marketing agency. Uh, we founded Untethered Media about 10 years ago now, which is kind of wild to think wild. about. Yeah, well like, <laughs> wow, thank you. Uh, we got started basically as um, travel influencers and bloggers back in the day, like when it was first getting started. Instagram was like the new hot thing when we were doing it. Um, but so we were really on the ground, um, building our own personal brands. And through that, we started working with hotels, tour operators, you know, tourism businesses. And they actually kind of came to us and we were like, hey, we see what you're doing. Like, could you advise on this? Could you help us with this? What do you think about, you know, paid ads over here? We were like, you know, we're not marketers. We're just doing this ourselves. But one thing led to another and our first client officially hired us. And yeah, that was well over 10 years ago now. But he's still our client today. And that's kind of how we got into this. We love travel. We love tourism. We're travelers ourselves. And I'm really honored that we get to work in the industry. So we Specialize in like a brand first approach to website design and development and then they are full service marketing, really making sure you show up everywhere that your target customer is engaging online. And we both know it's a much more holistic approach now. Consumers yeah. are on multiple channels and multiple different ways, a longer process. So we make sure yeah. that our customers show up everywhere they need to be. And yeah, we met at Talking Rock Connect, which is amazing yeah. event. Yeah, you guys put on a really good show over there. Uh, we really enjoyed being part of that. You guys had some great experts and uh, bringing in all the cultural aspects and stuff as yeah. well. Yeah, the flamenco, the cava, super fun. So it's great to be part yeah. of that. Yeah, it seems, it seems it seems a long time ago now uh, since we, we we did it. So you know, we're really, really looking forward to Morocco when we, we launch that. We should be um, pretty much you know, in the next few weeks. Um, we're actually going to launch Morocco, so that'll be the next one. Um, oh, and there's a couple of others we're bubbling away with, so we'll hopefully to announce them soon. But no, thanks for being sponsors. Thanks for being there. Your talks went down well, so... Uh, so I know everyone was raving about what you guys were doing. So so thank you. Done. So for the listeners, obviously with you guys being in marketing, web design, similar to myself, then obviously this podcast is going to have more of our marketing flavor. So we actually have four questions from four of our tourpreneurs. So, so shall we get stuck in and listen to the first one? No, let's go for it. Excellent. Excellent. So I believe the first one is from Susan. So I'm going to play this. Hopefully you guys will hear it. So let's see what this uh, what Susan has to say. Susan Brent, <clears throat> Genuine Morocco. We focus on U.S. and Canada adults, 40 plus. I'm struggling with which platforms for ads are the best and why I would choose that one. So far, we're looking at Google, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah, uh, so it sounds like we're looking for a ad platform to advertise on. Um, we touched on this a little bit when Casey brought up our intro. Um, I think that this my answer for this is typically the best ad is the ad that meets your customer where they are on their customer journey and gives them the message that they're looking for to get them closer to a purchase. Uh, so I would maybe focus on that answer versus which platform is the best for me. Um, so each platform kind of does its own thing and there's different demographics on each platform. Um, but I would maybe try to start answering that question first and then taking that and seeing which platform might work best for you and which ad creative and which ads you would run or run uh, according to that. Um, yeah, we, I mean, we do a lot on Google and Meta. So I think that those are two great places to start looking and start your exploration and see. Um, Google is great for many reasons because, you know, with many ads and other ads, you're interrupting people. And so if I'm on Instagram or whatever that is, let's scroll, like maybe I'm looking for inspiration, but maybe I'm not. With Google, you have the intent. And so people are typing in, you know, seven day trip to Morocco, whatever it is, if you show up and your website is there and ready to convert and amazing, then that's great. 
Um, so I think Google makes a lot of sense depending on your keywords and exact offerings that you have. Um, combined with then remarketing on Meta, Facebook, and Instagram can be very successful. So I think you're in the right place in Ask and Ask just looking at those two. I'd be curious why LinkedIn, because I'm not sure if you do a lot of LinkedIn ads, um, for B2B, it can work great. So if you have like incentivized strong rule or you're targeting a business market, I would be curious why you're kind of looking at LinkedIn. Because we found that lots of B2B can be expensive and people aren't necessarily on LinkedIn for travel and vacations and things like that. Um, yeah, no, I have to, I have to agree. Yeah, no, I tend to find um, LinkedIn. Uh, well, two things: LinkedIn ads. I have yet to see any sort of return from LinkedIn ads. They're hugely expensive. I don't believe it's a great ad platform personally. Um, but where LinkedIn comes into its own is when when you're doing more organic posts on your own profiles, etc. But again, only if you're targeting B two B customers or corporate customers or something like that, that's where it would maybe come over into play. So yeah, I wouldn't bother with any ads on that platform. But yeah, I agree with you guys. No, it, it depends on the user journey, whether it's the dreaming, the planning, the booking, etc. No, depending on what stage they're going to be in. So Facebook for sure to help inspire people, get them to think. Actually, why don't I go to Morocco? I've never thought about Morocco and giving them ideas, etc. Uh, and then once they start planning and looking for flights and hotels and other things, that's where you do Google ads to maybe search ads and various other things for your for your content to come up and things like to inspire and keep your brand at the forefront so yeah i think a company especially for the 40 plus age group i think doing both would be would be beneficial personally but yeah linkedin was a lot it was an odd one um, unless there's a corporate angle which we don't know about the only thing that even if it is the right niche we've also found that they're very expensive and so you really have to be thinking about the ad budget and what kind of return can you get from it it's like a huge massive corporate thing maybe but um for the average company we just find it in worthwhile so yeah yeah no i i completely agree it's the same with tiktok ads incidentally i think they are hugely well, expensive especially yeah. in the 40 plus market you're probably not gonna yeah. find your entire bit audience yeah yeah no 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 it's very rare i i know a couple of 40 plus who have tiktok but no even i don't have tiktok on my phone i just I, as much as i'm in, the, in this marketing space etc no, if, if i could live without social media on my phone i would but unfortunately unfortunately we have to have on <laughs> but uh but yeah it's just one of those tools you have to use but uh but no yeah so i agree google facebook no and and just um i don't know what's sort of will take the podcast but the way i see facebook ads is almost like the modern day flyer it's great no if you if you if you printed out ten thousand flyers and you know hope that a hundred people would pick them up and get in contact or go through the website or whatever it's basically the same thing it's just that you could be a lot more targeted with the people who are going to pick them up so more people pick up that virtual flyer type thing and, and go from there so and it's just really to inspire people and get them through the next stage of planning and booking and hopefully that sort of stuff so yeah a combination of both haven't seen it for sure and chris you talked about work in sevilla but the other great thing about facebook is how you can have the different ads you can have a testimonial ad or you can have your video ad or your you know opt-in or you're about story and so you get all the different creatives so you can be really smart and strategic in how you are marketing and showing up to move along the customer journey so it's not just like the same flyer took thousand times so like all the different breeds for different people or they need it that's exactly i know that you, you shouldn't sell straight away on facebook because no one no unless you're selling a pair of shoes or whatever no you may get the odd person who would click on that and pay, uh, buy them but for, no, imagine going to Morocco, it's going to be multi-day tours, I would suspect. Um, again, we don't know if it's day tours, but I imagine it'll be multi-day tours. No one's going to book that straight away without research, without knowing you know, the business and trusting them. And all those ads all help towards that, for sure. So, yeah, it's getting them at the right stage. Yeah. Well, I hope that works for you, Susan. Hopefully, I hope you get some, some insights from that. Um, we'll now kick on with uh, Andrew and see what Andrew has to say for himself. Hi, my name is Andrew from Nature Meetings in Madeira. We promote guided walk and outdoor activities and our biggest challenge or objective is the most efficient way to drive direct sales. So we're looking to increase traffic to our website and convert that into sales. Um, well, this kind of follows nicely from the last question, I guess, because if we're talking about increasing traffic well first it's a great question because we don't want to just increase traffic but also the conversion so i think we can maybe tackle that question in two parts but when it just comes to driving traffic i mean you're probably going to want a paid ads approach you could do organic as well but paid ads you know you're paying to play so it tends to be a quicker return um so yeah 
probably a combination of Google and social media, meta Instagram ads is what I would say would be the most efficient way to start getting eyeballs on your website. Yeah, there's definitely some stuff you can do in terms of like SEO and content marketing and stuff like that. The nice thing about paid ads is that it's almost like that skip the line pass. Um, and so you can choose exactly which keywords you want to bid on and that gets you kind of at the front of the line as opposed to doing a lot of SEO and content marketing, hoping Google kind of picks up on that and ranks you for the keywords that you want. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. And, and uh, as you guys know, the the website has to be on point as well. You know, if it's if it's a terrible UX or it's hard to book or whatever, if they're using a platform or not, if, if that falls flat, then all that money you could spend on ads is probably going to be thrown down the drain. So you do need to you know, make sure, I know that's something that you guys do, so you do need to make sure the website's on point as well. I actually, you know, I spend a lot of time just looking at other people's ads, which you probably do the same, but it becomes kind of like addicting while I was like going through looking. And the other day I saw this beautiful luxury property advertising. And when you clicked through, the website was broken. You could not book. You could not, the only way to get contact with them was like through a message on Instagram. So I messaged them and I was like, you guys might want to pause your paid ads until your website is working. And they had no idea. They were like, oh, thanks for letting us know, blah, blah, blah. But it's like painful to see because it's like, at the end of the day, they're going to think the paid ads didn't work. And it's like, actually, online touch was great ad. I clicked through and I was like, oh, it's literally broken. I can't see anything else. And so that's obviously like an extreme example. But really like remembering that, you know, you know your website well, you know your business. You probably look at it all the time. But what is someone going to think the first time that they land on your website? And so it needs to be immediately clear, you know, we say above the fold, but the very first thing that you see, who are you? What do you do? And who do you do it for? And yeah, Danny gave like a whole talk on this at Incivil, but you know, think about that first image or video and the messaging that you have and make sure that it's speaking directly to your guests' needs and wants and everything and distinguishes you like right off the bat. They shouldn't have to guess, nothing too clever or creative. And we see that a lot. Like, you know, if I'm clicking through from the ad and I land on your page, what is that first impression that I have? And make sure that it's one worth staying around for and I can really book, learn more. The information's right there to get in touch. You mentioned too that not everyone most people aren't going to purchase on the first interaction either. So having ways of either email opt-ins or ways that people can continue to stay in touch with you um, are super crucial. So you can continue that kind of remarketing journey and build that relationship and that trust. Um, and I think that goes a long way, especially looking at you know, how to convert uh, get this traffic into sales as making sure that you continue to have those touch points and those touch points are easily accessible. Yeah, it's, it's 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 a bigger issue than what a lot of people realise. You know that, that I'm the same as you. you know, I I look on, especially on Facebook ad library, you know, on a regular basis just to see what people's ads are like and things like. So I like to sort of see what people are doing, um, and you go to the websites and you're going, oh, why, why did you spend that money on these ads when you're you got a website that's broken or just doesn't do the job properly? Or, or yeah, it's it's yeah, it's in this day and age, there's no excuse for not having a good website. You no, know, there's so many solutions out there now. And obviously you guys build great websites as well and everything else. So it's, it's, it's a lot of people, I know I, a lot of businesses, and this isn't just down to operators, it's just businesses in general. They'll focus on things that are more tangible or, or, or things that make them almost like make their egos feel good and things like that. You no, know, rather than saying, actually you have to remove yourself away from the website. You know, when you're designing a website, don't design it for yourself. No, even if you hate the colors, if you hate everything else about it, a website should be designed for your customers in mind. So it's, it's something I, I say a lot to to, to, to operators say, you know, when, when, I, when a designer or whether it's a web designer or a graphic designer or anything like that is designing something that they think will work for your business, hopefully they've done the research in terms of why it should work for your business. No, the operators shouldn't be there designing websites, et cetera, because it's, it's like t- telling a plumber to plumb a different way because you think you know better when you don't basically you have to you have to go with the data and everything else so we actually had another client and her website you know when she first started us was horrible and we were talking to her we're like it doesn't make sense to spend all this like we can take your money sure but you're not gonna get the results so we're not gonna do that like you've got to fix the foundation and she was like but i like my website it's pretty <laughs> you know it's just like you know that's great like if it's just for you that you're guessing you have no idea what you do and how to make a book like it's not at all by landing on the site, no idea what you're trying to offer. So really, I mean, what you said, remove yourself from the picture. And you can get feedback from friends or other people. There's some really cool tools out there also. Um, unaffiliated, totally, but Crazy Egg is a really fun one. Um, look that up. Uh, it's basically like a heat map tool. You can download it if you use WordPress. They have a plugin. It's super simple. I think they have a 30-day free trial as well. Um, so you can actually see exactly how people are interacting with your key pages, what they're clicking on, how long they're looking at 
sections of the website that type of stuff. It gives you some really, really cool insights into how people are actually using your website versus um, how you think they might be. Yeah, no, that's good. good as a good tip, very good tip. Now, another one is Hotjar as well. That's, that can do a similar similar thing. Um, but just on 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 Andrews, I, I, uh, I'm actually half Portuguese. My father was actually from Madeira, so I know Madeira very well. Um, so it's you know in terms of those ads and, and whatever it is you're trying to get more direct traffic to the website. Yeah, again, think about how the website is. Is it showing Madeira off in the best possible light? It isn't just about having good photographs and videos on there. It's, it's showing your own customers and people having you know, enjoying themselves while they're out on tour and doing all these things. Though, and again, because I know Madeira, it is a beautiful place. And it's really getting that across to say, you know, why instead of going to Spain or mainland Portugal or somewhere else in Europe, why don't you spend that extra hour on a flight and come to Medina? Because it's unlike unlike anywhere else, basically. And it's just tapping into the na- the, the nature and the natural beauty of the of the island. So things like that would work. I know nothing about Madeira, but we know a lot of people going all of a sudden. It seems yeah. like it's like it's having a moment or something. So uh it might be a way to eat. I don't know if that's just like my friends. It's actually a trend with more people going, but kind of popping on that. But Chris, like you were saying, you know, I don't really know what it looks like. I think I've heard it called the Hawaii of Portugal or something like that. But, you know, again, it just because you know how beautiful it is, don't take for granted that the average person does who isn't European or familiar with it. And I love what you said about having your guests in the photos because I think we just see a stock photo, but we want to see people and relate to that experience. And I want to say, oh, well, that could be me doing that hike that that you offer. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All that helps answer that one, Andrew. Uh, we will now go on to Long has a question. Let's see what Long has to say for us. My name is Long. My company's name is Experience Travel. I'm based in Vienna, Austria. I am tour operator, travel agent, holds a licensed tourist guide certificate as well. My struggle right now is how to increase my visibility. It seems to be everyone has a similar, <laughs> a similar yeah. issue, to be honest. So again, increasing visibility. So yeah, so again, that sort of follows on from the other two. Yeah. So yeah, I think a lot of things that we said would apply here as well. But one thing I will say with visibility is that a lot of people think to be visible, they need to be everywhere at once. And this might sound contradictory because we talk about taking a holistic approach, but like we're a marketing agency, we have the experience. If you are running your business and offering the tours and doing your work, you do everything alone, you can't be everywhere all at once and do it really well right off the bat in the beginning. So sometimes we say to zoom in and choose one platform that you could do really well. Maybe it's Instagram Reels or it's a YouTube channel or it's a Facebook group, whatever it is. Like start with one thing and get really good at it, show up consistently and be visible there. And then once you feel like you've mastered that platform, you're getting some traction, you can start repurposing the content and adding in a different filler. <laughs> um, but a lot of people, they you know want to be visible. So they're like, okay, I heard I need TikTok and YouTube and an email list and this and that and whatever. And it's like throwing spaghetti at the wall and you're spreading yourself too thin. And so you're not actually showing up anywhere at all. But... Yeah, I think that, um, well, there's maybe two things I want to touch on. The first one is that uh, visibility can be kind of a double-edged sword. We've had clients who... Have gone viral on yeah. Instagram and some of these other platforms, and you get tons and tons and tons of followers, um, but none of them actually have any intent on either traveling or booking with you. And so then you continue to, you know, have your account, but then nobody's really engaging with you, so that not hurts your algorithm. And then some people have said like going viral was the worst thing that ever happened to me because now I have tons and tons of people who are never gonna actually purchase with me. And the people um, that were engaging with you before now are listening to it. Yeah. So. It's, it's, it's so true. You know, um, we, we had a, um, we'll still have a, an Irish operator who, who we've been helping for many years. Um, uh, and we found, you know, we started working with them. We found one of their blogs, which was all about sheep, was, 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 was getting a lot of traffic. But it was getting a lot of traffic for all the wrong reasons. It was just, it was people who would never buy, you know, it might have been school children looking at things and all that sort of stuff and everything else. So we had to, uh, we had to actually pull that down and repurpose it to a certain way that tied in more with what they were doing, et cetera. But yeah, it's, you could have some great content on a website, but is it actually going to help people in the long run and get them through that next step of, of booking, et cetera? And you really need to be careful with that. So, Yeah, exactly. What is the goal behind this content or you know, and what does visibility mean? It sounds like you just, you know, want to get some more targeted traffic, which is great. But yeah, being careful with vanity metrics for sure. Right off the bat is just something good to be aware of. And I would say as we do choose a platform to like focus on, um, I would encourage you to make it video. Um, I know the video can be very like, 
daunting and can seem like a big task. Um, but once you do kind of nail that down, it's a lot easier to then take that content. You can take out the audio and start a podcast if you want. You can take it and turn it into a transcription, write blogs from it. You can take it in micro chunks and do Instagram reels, TikToks. Um, you can pull the uh, text out and make shorter captions with images, things like that, turn into blog posts. Um, so it's a lot easier to do it that way and start with video and make little chunks out of that. Yeah, even if even if the operators are listening or, or it's like, oh, I'm not great at writing scripts or writing what I want to try and say and stuff like that. Um, it's actually going to be a, a, a marketing hack that I'm going to be doing on the Tourpreneur community soon um, about creating a, a video for an ad within 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I went through a process with a, with, a, with a client recently and we had the bullet points of what they wanted to say in the ad. We had some footage from them that they all filmed on phones uh, and that literally was... Here's a bullet points into ChatGPT, help write a 30 second script. The script was good. We uploaded it into another platform, got a, an AI voiceover, which doesn't sound like an AI voiceover. It sounds really good. Added that to the video, edited to some free music. Within 50 minutes, it was done. You know, it's, it's like you can, that's where tools like this can, can work very, very well. I know people are a little bit nervous about AI and things like that, but this is where tools like that can work very, very well. And it allows you to create these videos and create the assets a lot, lot quicker than what you would, what you'd expect. So, yeah, absolutely. And another thing with videos too is like, you don't necessarily have to have your face in them. Like your example, you know, it's like voiceovers, it's probably B-roll. But even if you're doing like Instagram reels, I was just using this example with someone else, but we were in Europe recently and we were in Paris. And before I went, you know, I'm doing research on Instagram to get my inspiration and that discovery phase we're ready to go. And I got this like great reel that's like, okay, five amazing restaurants that you have to go to when you're in this neighborhood of Paris. And it's just the girl talking and it's, you know, like photos. I don't even think it was a video that she'd like stream together. And it all happened to be within walking distance of her at Airbnb. And I was like, oh, interesting. And then I see another one. And it's another great thing about all the best like playgrounds and areas to go with kids. Again, all walking distance from her Airbnb. We're traveling with our one and a half year old. So I'm like, by the end of like three of these reels, I'm like, I'm going to stay here. This place is perfect for us. It's got all of this restaurants, all of this places for kids. Of course, she was fully booked for like six months. And we weren't planning that far in advance. We didn't get to stay there. So we went to one of the restaurants that was owned by our parents. It was the best meal we had in Paris. I told them that I found it from Instagram. <laughs> Thanks. So, yeah, just as you think about visibility, like you can provide a ton of value in a unique way. I think for Vienna is where you said you were. So, like, you know, what cool things can you share about your city that, you know, the average person doesn't know? You don't have to be in the videos, but provided in that content and that um, manner can be really engaging and really a great way to then get people kind of like scrolling more in that inspiration phase. But then they're like, oh, well, this is the person have to go to Vienna with because look at all the great things Sherry told me. So um, you really think about videos in like 10 seconds, you know, none of these were long. It doesn't have to be 12 feature like, you know, YouTube productions. So yeah, I like to think of it as if you're giving this away for free, imagine what you get when you pay for something. Yeah. So. I like that. That's really good. I like that very much. Um, excellent. Excellent. Okay, we're going to have the last one. Now, this last one, um, sort of cheating slightly. Um, I actually have heard this question before because this was Sean who uh, asked this question on a previous uh, uh, call, uh, call and show that we did uh, a, a couple of months back. But we thought it'd be good for you guys to listen to and get your take on it as well. So it's quite a unique one. It's a bit different from the others, but um, let's hear what Sean has to say from himself. This is Sean Grant from Great Falls Travel in Washington, D.C. This is a marketing question. I am considering purchasing a tour company that operates without a website. They do maintain an active Facebook group and utilize an email list to inform their customers about their new tours. To better assess the effectiveness of their digital marketing efforts, could you suggest three key questions I should ask the owner regarding the email marketing strategy and social media presence? Thank you. Well, Griff, I'd love to hear what you said. This one's kind of an interesting one for us because we actually have a client who they do have a website, but they have a similar yeah. strategy where they have a Facebook group yeah. with like 200,000 yeah. people in it and they yeah. funnel people to an email list and then they market that way. And so it can be very effective if it is set up in the right way. So this Facebook group that our client has you know, is related to Country Good Travel and their tour operator. Um, and so... They get like thousands of people every week, but not everyone in this group is interested in planning a trip. Some of them are already in the destination. Some, you know, are in the discovery phase, et cetera, et cetera. So what we, that would be my first question is looking at the Facebook group that they have. You said it's an active group, but is it active with the right people? 
um, what is their new growth rate, what kind of discussions are happening in there. I would want to make sure that just looking at the group itself, it's yeah, sure. acted with the right people and having the right conversations. Um, How these people would get fit for whatever service you're providing inside of that. Yeah. It's just thinking of any metrics, like it's really easy to add a Facebook group with 200,000 people, but if the majority of them, you know, find it because they're in Facebook typing in Costa Rica Trout, wherever you're looking. How do I get on the bus for A to B? Yeah. I'm really going to help you. No. So, yep. um, an interesting data though, which I would suggest is to join the Facebook group. You have, you don't have to, there's a question that says, do you want to get travel tips and updates, but you're eating in. It's one of the main questions where like that, when they're asking, who are you and what are you trying to do? So that's a really great way to grow your email list actually. So if anybody listening is thinking about a Facebook group, I definitely would put that question in because you want to get people off the Facebook group and into your email list. Um, okay. as efficiently as possible. But then from there, what we did is we set up a welcome sequence and the very first email we send out has trigger links, which basically says, who are you? You are planning a trip, you're currently in the country or you are in the discovery phase. Take a second to answer. There's a gift for you waiting on the other side. And so we actually, most people, not most, but like we have a very high rate of people that click through and answer that. And we're able to see, okay, right now about like 60% of mm -hmm. people are planning a trip, they're the right target customer, so we can segment them and keep marketing to them and pushing through our offers and close <laughs> at a higher rate. And so that's like the metric we look at. So So um, these are yeah, these are links that are in the first welcome email that they get. It's either yeah, are you already in Costa Rica? Are you planning a trip to travel to Costa Rica or are you just kind of like inspired by it? <laughs> and so Never. for everyone they click, they get sent to a different landing page and they actually get tagged inside of this email segmentation and so we know exactly in these different groups if you're you know right for this type of email where it starts sending you down this funnel which is going to lead you to our kind of like tour agency services or yeah, okay. we're just going to send you yeah. costa rica inspirational content um or we just kind of kind of leave you off to the side um, if yeah. you're already in costa rica and traveling and maybe you want to think about traveling here again yeah, I was, just, I was just going to say that, and, and, and that method is also a great way of, of if you're doing stuff like Facebook ads. So if you if they click on and land on a particular landing page, then at least you know, okay, if they're in Costa Rica or they're doing something else, then you know that the content and the ads that you serve are going to be relevant to what they clicked on as well. So it, it gives you more more angles in terms of the marketing channels you can use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it sounds like a little tactical, but more and more people want personalized marketing, and it doesn't take that long, and it's not that hard to set up, and so you can do that really and then you can make sure yeah that you're giving people what they want and it's just gonna make the experience better for them but then you can your price higher as well so um so to go back to like the three questions that we would ask i mean the first one is how's the facebook group the second one is if, he, if they're sending out emails about their tours and their new operates what is the actual close rate are they filling up with one email are there still spaces left um but that's just kind of right now so then i would also want to know how is the list growing and is there room for growth? So, ha and that's where the trigger like coming that I mentioned is like, are they adding new subscribers to their email list that allow you, if you're going to offer more tours in the future to keep marketing to that list, or is it going to be totally saturated and you buy the company and then in two years, it's not growing quick enough to have that be your sole you know, marketing channel? Yeah, I think I think that's one of the issues Sean has um, from a couple of conversations I've had with him. So, you know, the business that he's looking to buy sounds great. Um, a lot of loyal customers, they he gets a lot of repeat business through this this business he's looking to buy. Um, but I think a lot of them are loyal to the previous owner. So there's been a lot of personal connections through them, etc. So there's obviously the fear of if he takes over and uh, you know that other person's not there anymore, are the clients basically or the customers going to going to drop off it? So it's I uh, know, and I sort of advised Sean at the time. I said, "No, any any marketing and any communications you're doing, both of you need to be involved. It's almost like the other owner has to almost give everyone else to say, look, I trust this person, the person that's taking over the business. Um, well, I'm still here to advise and all these other things as well, but this is who's going to take the business forward and stuff like that and go from there. But yeah, it's getting new blood into the business. I think it may be an older demographic, but it's getting new blood into the business and through the Facebook group and other marketing channels that you guys have mentioned, I think will all help with them. So. And the other thing as well, if, I know if there is that many long-term returning customers as well, is, is utilizing those people to say, look, can you do video testimonials? Can you do written testimonials, reviews? Then when you get the website built off, if that business has been doing really well without a website, then they're obviously doing something right. So think about getting all those assets, you know, utilizing the, the, 
the growing fans that are ob obviously there um, to help you create content that you can then put onto a website and YouTube channels and social channels and, and all these things as well. So, you know, if, 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 if the customers have had such a great time, they keep coming back, then I'm sure you will get a lot of them uh, looking to, you know, leave a review. And it even so, you know, if it's, it's maybe something to think about um, running a competition, you no, know, because you've had so many people who are, are a re a repeat, but repeat customers, it's sort of saying, okay, no, we're going to run a competition for all the people who are repeat customers. You've got a chance of winning one of our tours in the future for, for you and a friend or something like that. And then you'll be quite surprised at how many submissions you would get in terms of people leaving reviews and various other things from that sort of things. You need to be careful in how, in how you do that in certain platforms, but if it helps you get content and stuff off the website, then all that will help in the long run. So Exactly. Yeah. You can end up buying the plan, do you know, or he's still considering? Uh, I'm not too sure actually. I think he's still considering, although I think he's quite far on. So um, hopefully, Sean, you can you can give us an update um, once you, once you know if you bought it or not, and things like that. So no, more go. This black one that maybe I might just add, and I need to touch on this, but Facebook groups are a great way to build engagement, and the company's doing something right if they're getting people onto their email list. But just being really careful about building your soul marketing channel on a platform you don't own. You know, Instagram went down last week and everyone was talking about it. And like that does happen. And if for some reason your account gets disabled or it gets flagged and it shouldn't be, but it is, and you lose access, then you know, it can happen. I've heard of some operators just losing access to Facebook accounts, et cetera, for no reason whatsoever. It just sometimes happens. And there's no support, but it's probably fresh, but <laughs> you know, it's Facebook, Facebook support is probably one of the worst in the industry, to be honest. It is terrible. Well, that's all the questions. I know I can't thank you enough for 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 your time. You know, if if uh, if anyone wanted to get in touch with you guys or know more about Untethered Media, what's the best channels to get in touch with you with? Yeah, so our website is untethered.media, mm -hmm. and then we're also on social media as well. Uh, but the website would be the best way. <laughs> Most of the people there. Uh, yeah, I know we talked a little bit about uh, customer journey and making sure you have the foundation and the website yeah. everything set up we do have a website talk list on there as well if you can download for free if you are interested in just uh, you can give yourself a quick audit um and seeing where you're at perfect perfect well guys i can't thank you enough for your time um between seville and now so um hopefully we'll meet up another connect soon and things like that and and, and get you know yeah, in Morocco, maybe, maybe we'll see you there. Hopefully, <laughs> uh, being up, but um, really looking, looking forward to that. So, yeah, there's a couple of other destinations we're looking at as well, which we're going to announce soon. So, um, and there is going to be one that's state in the US, so that will be getting announced soon as well. Um, so, um, yeah, we're working, working behind the scenes, doing lots and lots of things. So, we're just trying to get them all, 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 all pushed out. So, for all listeners, um, yeah, we're going to be adding more content to the uh, community app, the Fleur Circle that we've got as well, as well as the Facebook group. Um, we'll be adding more videos, and uh, this video will be will be on the Facebook group. We'll be on all the channels, audio channels as well, through Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all the other usual channels. So, guys, again, can't thank you enough. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll catch up soon. And yeah, thanks for all the advice and help that you've given given the thanks listeners. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate. It. Always great to see you, and look forward to hopefully seeing you again, maybe first again soon. <laughs>